Now the other thing that is not seen on paper, but it's very important, is vowel length. Vowel length. Now, when we talk about length, let me see if I can find something here. All right. I've got myself a rubber band. Do you have a rubber band? Just a piece of elastic. A piece of elastic. Do you have a piece of elastic? Can you grab a rubber band? Because if you can, it'll be really good for you to feel the kinesthetic feel of how the language stretches out. All right. So when you write a word down, H A D H A T, that's got three letters. Both of them have three letters. S E A T S E E D. Oh, they have four letters. Doesn't look any different. And you think wrongly that you pronounce them the same. Hmm. Okay, what I'm here to tell you is they are not the same. The vowel length, the, that means how long you pronounce the vowel, differs depending on whether the end of the word is voiced or voiceless. So seat and seed vary in their, they differ in the, the length of time it takes you to say the E. So when it ends in a voiceless consonant like seat. It's shorter. When it ends in a voiced consonant like seed, it's longer. Think of the time it takes to vocalize, to vibrate your vocal cords. So when you vibrate your vocal cords, it helps to have the E, the vowel stretched out. All right. Now, probably in many of your languages you don't do that, but English you need to. So I want you to exaggerate this so you can feel it. So if you have a little piece of elastic, a piece of rubber, something you can stretch, do this with me now. Seat, seed, sight, side, mate, made, kit, Kid. Ice. Eyes. Place. Plays. Lace. Lays. Excuse. That's a noun. Excuse. That's a verb. Excuse. So, longer on the, uh, in the syllables, that end with a voiced sound. So I gave you an example of seed. Even the word see, which ends in a vowel sound, is longer in duration than the word seat. Now, if you ask any native speaker, they won't know what you're talking about at all because they don't do anything with acoustics. They never see anything graphed on a, on a spectrogram. But if you see a recording of words on a spectrogram, then you would be able to see the duration different for words like these, these word pairs. All right, so since you can't see them, I'm asking you to pull out the stretch out the vowel because this way you can feel the length of the vowel. Now, in our, in our third column, we have some words that end in the TH sound. Now, the TH sound, remember there are two TH sounds. One is voiceless. This is the one that has continuous flow of air. The other one is the voiced. We, we vibrate the vocal cords. We vibrate the tongue. And we say Now. When you were a baby, I know that was a long time ago, but when you were a baby, you didn't have any teeth. Do you remember that? Probably not. But if you are a parent and you had babies, you may notice that the babies start growing their teeth. We call this to teeth. The verb to teeth means to erupt. You know, the one tooth comes up. So why is the baby crying? The baby is teething. This means a tooth is erupting through the gums and it's probably a little painful. So this is the sound teeth. So watch me, teeth, teeth, try it, teeth, teeth. teeth. I have a lot teeth. of teeth right now, so I don't teeth anymore. <laughs>
humans only teethe when they're babies. But maybe if we were whales, we could teethe very often. There are some whales that grow new teeth every season. Not me. Now, we have the word breath, which is a noun. Just like teeth is a breath. noun and teeth breath. is a verb. We have the word breath. Take a big breath. <sighs> That's a noun. Breath. And the verb is breathe. Notice we spell this word breathe. with an E breath. at the end, just like teeth, T-H-E, and breathe ends with each uh, T-H-E. The vowel is different from a eh to e, but the length is what I want you to pay attention to. Breath, breathe, 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 breathe deeply, breathe deeply. Now we have an, another noun and verb, and that has B-A-T-H, which bath, to take a bath, bath, bath. and the verb bath. to bathe, to bathe. Also ends with T-H-E. That's the verb. Notice the vowel changes to A, E, A, and A are different. Now pay attention to the length of the vowel. Bath. Bathe. Bath. Bath. Bathe. Bath. Bathe. Now this next pair is cloth and clothes. The vowel is different. The verb is clothe, T-H-E, at the end. This is a verb. To feed and clothe and educate my children. Those are my duties as a parent. I need to support them. I need to feed them, give them enough to eat. I need to clothe them. That means I need to give them some clothing. So the word clothe, to clothe, is a more formal word. It doesn't exactly mean to get dressed. Every morning you get dressed. You clothe yourself, that's possible, but it sounds a little bit too formal, so we use it in sentences just like I told you. You know, some duties of a parent are to clothe, feed, and educate our children, right? All right, watch the, watch the vowel length, cloth, clothe, cloth, clothe, cloth. So my clothes are made of cloth. So we have the word clothes. And this word clothes, by the way, when we use this as a verb, uh, a noun, my clothes, it's always plural, and it has the same meaning as a singular clothing, my clothing. So my clothing is on the table, my clothing is in the drawer, my clothes are on the table, my clothes are in the drawer. We have to change the verb to match it. The word cloth, it means the material, right? This is made of cloth, a cloth, cloth. a tablecloth. Okay. Here are a few more in our next group, in group B. Coat. It's kind of horse. Coat. Cold. Coat. Cold. Cold. Oh, the coat is cold. The coat is cold. Cold. The coat, little cold. horse, is cold. The vowel sounds longer when it's followed by the old d because d is a voiced sound. Lent cold. is the past tense of lend. 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 I lend you money on a regular basis. I lent you money yesterday, last week. Lent. Lend. Lent. Lend. Same thing for sent. Send. Past tense sent is a past send. tense of send. Send. Right. I sent send. you a letter yesterday. I send you a letter often. Write. Ride. Write. Ride. Right. That's right. I'll give you a right. ride. Right. Now, right. the next group of words, right. a lot of people get mixed up with the spelling. The first word is an adjective, loose. My tooth is loose. My clothes are too loose. Lose. Did you lose weight? Weight. Your pants are too loose. Did you lose weight? So the L-O-S-E is the longer vowel. Don't get confused about how many letters there are. When you write the word, think about how it sounds. Sauce. Saws. Sauce. Applesauce, soy sauce, saws. 
Grr, grr, grr. Those are the tools, saws. We have this word, the next word is an adjective, close, which means near, close, or good, as close. in close friends. Close is the verb. Close the door, close, close to you. Close the door. Which door? The one close, close to you. The, the next pair we have is rice and rise. Rice. rice. I like to eat rice. Rise. Right. Before you make bread, you have to make the dough and let the dough rise. After right. you let it rise, then you can put it in the oven and eat the bread, unless you prefer to eat rice. Rise. Rice. Right. In the third rice. column, we have two pairs of words. In this case, we have a word that is spelled the same but pronounced differently depending on whether it's a verb or a noun. Now this mouth. is my mouth. This is my mouth. mouth. Ends with a voiceless th sound, mouth. This is my mouth. And you're looking at your mouth, I hope. When mouth. you lip sync, when you lip sync, you look like you're singing the song. You're mouthing the words without letting any voice come out. So to mouth the words, whether it's you want to say hello to somebody on the other side of campus, but you don't want to interrupt anybody. Maybe you're in the library, you want to say, mouth. that's mouthing. I'm mouthing the words hello and hi mouth. without making mouthing. a voiced sound to mouth. That's the TH that's voiced. Therefore, mouth. mouth is the noun. Mouth is the verb. Mouth, 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 mouth and mouth. The next word is a not a common word, but you should know what it is. When you have a knife and you have a blade or a gun with a blade, something sharp, you want to put it into something to protect it. What is that thing called? It's called a sheath. Yeah. A sheath. So a you sheath. put your knife or your sword, okay, for sword fighters, you put it into a sheath. That is something to protect the blade. When we say sheath your sword, that means put your sword back into the sheath. So the action is called sheath. Nowadays, sheath. In our lives, we probably don't use this vocabulary very much because we're not doing any sword fights. But maybe you'll watch a Western movie and you'll see them doing this, okay? So we have the, the noun sheath and the verb sheath, 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 and sheath. So that's a little bit about vowel length. What I'd like to do is to remind you that when you speak words, when you speak words, when you pronounce words that end in a voiceless sound, you should stretch the vowel out longer. And that may take some practice. Now a lot of you, because you're fluent in speaking English and you like to say a lot of things, when you're practicing, just say short phrases so you can really feel how you're pulling out the vowel sounds. Otherwise, you're so busy thinking about all the things you want to say that you brrrr, and you may not actually f develop that feeling for the vowel length. This changes the rhythm. So this will change the rhythm of your speech. If your rhythm right now is da 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 you'll be able to do da 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 a lot better when you start to feel it, see it, smell it, almost taste it. Got it? Any other questions?